let's stand. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, we need to pray for uh, Brother Johnny Collins. We need the Lord to touch him. And we need to remember Lorena Mangia and her family during this difficult time. A lot of decisions being made. And she needs the Lord to touch her. Amen. Yes, sir. Okay, let's pray for Johnny Dossi, and let's remember also Michael Jeffrey, and uh, just all of those that that are struggling. Amen. They need the Lord to touch them tonight. Let's pray to Lord. We thank you, God, for this opportunity, Lord Jesus, Almighty God, Lord. I come before you, and I ask. That God, that you move and you work and you have your way, Lord Jesus, in this service tonight and touch every life. God Almighty, Lord, help us, God, as we study your word. Help us, Lord Jesus, to learn and to glean from your word, O oh God. Heavenly Father, we pray for Johnny Collins. Lord, we ask for you to heal his body. Almighty God, touch Johnny Dossie, Lord. God, we call his name out to you tonight, Jesus. We ask for you to move and work and touch, oh God. Lord, touch Lorena Mangia, God. We pray for healing in her body, oh God. Jesus, we pray for her husband and children, God. Almighty God, we pray for you to move and work. God Almighty, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we ask. For you to touch Michael Jeffrey tonight. God, for you to work in this life. God, be with us this evening as we study your word. And help us, God, to draw closer unto you. In Jesus' name. Everybody say, in Jesus' name. You can be seated. Amen. Praise God. Have a few announcements that we need to make. Uh, on Friday night. Friday night at 6 o'clock, uh, if uh, the church fan will be leaving my father's house. So if you would like to ride on the church fan and go to a youth rally in Gatesville, you are welcome to ride on the church fan. Uh, if you've got kids that want to go, we want them to go. It's actually a children's rally. Um but but they uh, they they gear it towards everybody, so it's going to be a great time. And uh, but we're going to leave Pastor's house at six p.m. Beginning at nine p.m. on uh, on this Friday, we're going to have all night prayer from nine p.m. to six in the morning. And if you haven't already gotten with Brother Dingman, please do that. And let him know what hour or hours that you desire to pray. And we want to try to cover the entire evening. And then this Sunday, everybody say this Sunday. Sunday. There's not going to be any Sunday school. This is what we, we term fifth Sunday every month. It's got five Sundays. Uh, on that fifth Sunday, we don't have Sunday school. We just have worship and preaching and just have an awesome time. And then afterwards, we have a meal next door. We have a time of fellowship. And uh, this coming Sunday, we have Brother Powell preaching for us. Um, and we are looking forward to him being here. Amen. We've got some upcoming dates. We've got a, a ladies' conference at the end of March. If you want to go to ladies' conference, please get with Sister Emily or Sister Ratliff. And then we have men's conference at the end of April, April 28th through the 30th. If you need to ask off, please do. That is to the men and it's men's conference. And so please, we want you to go and we want everybody to go. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. If you have your Bibles, I'd like for you to turn with me to first Samuel or Samuel chapter number 21. 
1 Samuel chapter number 21 and verse number 10. I have a quite lengthy passage of scripture, so I'm going to read the first verse and then we'll pray and you can be seated. And David arose and fled that day for fear of Saul. Everybody say, for fear of Saul. Fear of Saul. And went to Achish, the king of Gath. Let's pray, Lord. God, I pray for you to anoint your word today. Help us, God. Help us to grow and grow closer to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. You can be seated. Amen. This first verse in 1 Samuel chapter 21 and verse number 10. And David arose and fled that day for fear of Saul and went to Achish, the king of Gath. Uh, that is the Philistines, yeah, <laughs> amen. And, and, and the servants of Asia said unto him, Is not this David the king of the land? Did they not sing one to another of him in dances, saying, Saul hath slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands? And David laid up these words in his heart and was sore afraid. Everybody say, Sore afraid of Achish, the king of Gath, and he, he changed his behavior before him and feigned himself mad in their hands and scrabbled on the doors of the gate and let spittle fall down upon his beard. Then Achish said unto his servants, Lo, ye see, the man is mad. Wherefore then have you brought him to me? Have I need of madmen? That ye have brought this fellow to play the madman in my presence. Shall this fellow come into my house? And then chapter 22, verse 1. David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave Abdullam. And when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. Amen. I want to I wanna teach tonight uh, a lesson that I have that I, <clears throat> excuse me, a lesson that I entitled The Pandemic of Fear. The Pandemic of Fear. You see, fear is a real, very real human reality and emotion that uh, comes with the fallen condition of man. And uh, ever since Adam fell in the garden, and, and that fallen nature came upon all of humanity. We, we have become fearful. Amen. Cain, Cain was one of, one of the first to be fearful. You know, God cursed Cain and he was fearful. He said, uh, Lord, you have, you've run me out of my father's house. I'm going to a strange land and and people are going to try to kill me. They're going to, he was fearful. Fear comes from sin and from that fallen nature. Uh, furthermore, it would appear from the Bible that there are times that fear can actually be a spirit that takes on a, a form that we contend with. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter uh, 1 and verse 7 from God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. Time Magazine, they covered the results of a survey by Chapman University in 2015. Researchers asked a random sample of 1,500 adults to rate the level of fear for 88 different fear options across a variety of domains like crime and natural disaster. Uh, 58 of them the, had a fear of corruption of government officials. I, I, I believe that if they, up, if they updated that survey that today there is a pandemic of fear over a virus, over getting sick, over uh, to the point to where if there's you, you have any sniffles that, you know, I've, every year I've gotten a cold. 
every year. I mean, this is way before COVID came around or COVID was acknowledged. Uh, but every year I, I had the sniffles. I had a cold and, um, and you know, and, and I'm not trying to just uh, the downplay the virus, but I am trying to help us to understand tonight that God does not want us to be fearful. Uh, he does not want his people to live in a state of fear. Um, there's, there's all kinds, if you open up that door of fear and you begin to allow fear to dominate your life, and you begin acting upon fear and you begin responding to fear and, and in fear and you respond to situations uh, in fear. Then, then you're going to find that, that you have a very troubled life. Amen. The Bible says fear hath torment. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casteth out fear because Fear hath torment. God doesn't want you to be tormented. He doesn't want you living in a spirit of fear. He doesn't want that spirit of fear to grip you and to grab a hold of your life and, and cause you to where, I mean, church is completely shut down over the past couple years. There's, there's, uh, and, and I'm not going to lie, at the very beginning, whenever we didn't really know what was going on and what was happening? You know, the thought came to me, how, uh, how are we ever going to get back to the point of, of where we're not, where we're at church and we're not thinking about a dumb virus, but we're thinking about, hey, let's try to reach somebody. Let's pray for somebody. I mean, is it going to change the way that, that we reach uh, those that come to church? And uh, are we, are we going to stay six feet away? You know, back then it was six feet. Stay six feet away. And, and uh, are, are we going to allow this pandemic of fear to grip us to where we're not, we're not actively about the Father's business? I say nay. I say nay. You know, in, in the Bible days, there was, there was a disease. There was a disease that uh, today it's called Hansen's disease. Anybody know what disease that is? Leprosy. Yeah. Today it's called Hansen's disease. They, and they developed some cures for it or some, some medicine, some, some uh, cocktails that you can take that, that kind of minimize the effects of the disease. But back in the Bible days, there wasn't a cocktail to take. There wasn't medicine. It was looked at as the incurable disease and the only thing to do with those people was to isolate them was to set them outside of the camp was to was to no longer befriend them to the point to where you're going up and having a conversation with them but you are to stay away. I mean, God gave instructions in the Old Testament of what lepers are supposed to do. They were unclean, and so they, they need to be put outside of the camp. There, there was isolation where, where you're all by yourself in your colony of lepers. Everybody struggling with the same thing. But you know what Jesus did when Jesus walked this earth? Uh, he did not run away from lepers. He didn't run away from lepers. And his disciples, I'm sure they were thinking, Jesus, what are you doing? You're going to get leprosy. He ain't supposed to be, he ain't supposed to be around these people, much less you shouldn't be touching them, shouldn't be giving them a hug. You should, what in the world are you doing, Jesus? Can I tell you that Jesus did not live, did not allow his life to be ruled by fear? Oh, I, oh, I'm sure there was apprehension among the disciples because they were taught their whole life. You stay away from the leper. Don't get near. That is a disease that once you get it, your life is basically over. If, if you got it and your family didn't get it, you're 
basically shunned from your family for the rest of your life. You're, you're separated from your friends. It doesn't matter if you love mama and daddy. It doesn't matter if you love your brothers and sisters. It, that doesn't matter. If you came down with leprosy, you were shunned and you were set out of the camp. And you were not allowed to be around normal society. What am I trying to tell you? I'm trying to tell you that, yes, there, there, there is a virus going around. Now, whether or not it's linked up to the common cold, and, because I've had that every year, and, and, and they've expanded the symptoms of this Omicron one, where they say that it's sniffles, it's a runny nose, and a, a cough, and, and it's uh, the croup. They said the croup. And I'm like, man, I've, I've had that just about every year for like all my life. There is a certain time of the year I start, I get something in my chest and I don't know what it is. And, you know, I take, take little meds, pray about it, and the Lord takes care of it for me. Amen. So, so I'm not going to live my life in fear. I, I, you know, Jesus walked about doing the work of the kingdom. He did kingdom work. Everywhere Jesus went was for a purpose and for a plan. He didn't say, I'm going to shun the lepers. But he did the work of the kingdom. Now, I'm not saying going around and letting people cough in your face. You know, God wants us to be smart about things. But, but he also wants us to be about his father's business. You know, just because this virus has swept the world does not mean that the kingdom of God has stopped. In fact, the, the people of God need to be trusting in their God, amen. amen, and doing the work of God despite what is happening around us, amen, despite the storms that are coming in our, uh, in our lives, despite the things that we're facing, despite what everything is happening, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of fear in this world about the end of the world. You know, gee, there's prophecy. It's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, don't be afraid. Don't let fear consume you. Amen. You know, we, we hear a lot about all about the Antichrist coming, and we hear about the mark of the beast, and and all that stuff is interesting stuff to keep your eyes out for. Amen. But but the thing that Jesus talked about the most. He didn't say, hey, you watch out for that Antichrist. Or you watch out for that mark of the beast. But he did say, you watch for my return. As Christians, our focus and our mind, instead of the fear of the negative that's going to come in the end, we should lift up our eyes unto the hills from whence cometh our help. We should be looking for his return. We should, instead of having our eyes downward, that's where fear comes into our hearts. When we begin to look downward, when we, we begin to look at what's happening in this world, it can get us down and it can get us frustrated. But, but we need to lift up our eyes and say, you know what, I know that I'm in this world, but I know that I'm cold to a better world. Uh, amen. I'm, I, I, am, I am an heir to, a, to another kingdom. Uh, I'm, I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world. Uh, this world is not my home. Uh, but the Lord has prepared something greater for me. Amen. And don't let fear of the, or consume your life. You see, there's a pandemic of fear sweeping this land. Emptying our churches and paralyzing our minds. Interestingly, the researchers also found that half of all, American, all, all Americans believe in something paranormal. They believe that something's happened in the spiritual, whether it's good or bad. Amen. There's something that's happening. Amen. And there's an acknowledgement out there. Amen. But a lot of times uh, there's fears that accompany those, those acknowledgements. There are a variety of fears that we have to deal with on a daily basis. 
Most of them come to nothing, but we still have to deal with them. I almost, I almost titled this message, Crazy as a Bed Bug. Amen. That's an expression I heard over the years. But after digging into the heart of the story, I thought that it simply didn't fit David's actions. See, David was actually putting on a show of deception to save his life. You see, fear will put you in a dilemma. The predominant theme in this portion of scripture would be David's fear. In 1 Samuel 21, 10, he fled from Israel to the Philistines out of fear of Saul. The deadliest thing that he had to contend with was his actions that are recorded in 1 Samuel 21, 12. He laid up these words in his heart and was sore afraid of Achish. Fear can make you crazy. And that, is, that was what was operating in the life of David in this passage of scripture. Ecclesiastes 7 and 7 says, Surely oppression maketh the wise man mad. Oppression was very much a factor in David's life at this point. Earlier in the same chapter in 1 Samuel 21, you read of the terrible story where David is on the run from Saul. And he didn't have anything to eat. And he didn't have a weapon. And so he goes to Ahimelech, a, a priest in, in Nob, to get some relief. And Ahimelech surprise, supplies him with some of the showbread that the priest ate. And then gave him Goliath's sword. And soon he was on the run again from Doag, which, if you read the scripture, Saul uh, uh, commands Doag to go and kill 80 priests because they helped David. And see, fear will make you run. It made David run from Saul, even though. David had received strength in the house of the Lord. He ran from Achish, even though David had been supplied with a weapon, which was Goliath's sword, that was more than enough to help defeat Achish. Saul had 80 priests at Nob killed at the hand of Doag, and David is once again on the run from Saul. That fear is compounded, and he ends up leaving the country for the first time. But it's only to flee to another territory. To flee to an enemy territory. <coughs> David's flight from Saul will take him to three places over the next several months and years of his life. The first one was to Gath, which, is what, which was in the Philistine country. Second one was Adullam, which was in Judah. And the third place that fear would take him was Mizpah, which was in Moab. But as these unfold in the life of David, it will end up that during these wilderness days, that the grace of God will do some very good things in his life. He does not know it yet because life is Something that is lived forward. But as he would look back, uh, he, he would give honor uh, to the grace of God for that segment of his life. You see, when we're faced with fear, we have to make sure that time is essential to the interpretation of God's ways in our life. In other words, uh, uh, when we're faced with fear, we need to understand uh, that things often take a process of time for them to be fulfilled. You see, the cruel wrong that Joseph endured and the, and the pain and anguish that Jacob uh, endured proved to be good 
but it only worked out over the passage of time. Immediately it didn't look good, but God used that situation to save an entire nation. Forty years of wandering in the wilderness proved to be good for Israel, but it was only worked out in time. Peter was better for the bitterness and the shame of his betrayal of Jesus. Romans 8 and 28 tells us, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Who are called to them who are called to what you are facing. Amen. You see, David's expected end was to sit upon a throne. So that meant that any giant that got between him and that expected end was going to be overcame. Because David was tied to something greater in the future that his immediate problem was not able to apprehend and overtake. Amen. Amen. I've come to preach to you today. Amen. You've been allowing fear in your life. Uh, amen. The Lord, I believe, gave me this message to encourage you today. That, that, that you have been allowing fear to come into your life. Uh, and you've been allowing this pandemic of fear uh, to take over your life. Uh, to where you are paralyzed. Uh, amen. And God is trying to move uh, you past that. Uh, and help you to understand uh, that you are tied to something greater uh, than what you are facing in your life. Uh, you are tied to something greater. Amen. Goliath could not overtake David uh, because as a little boy, God anointed him to be king. Uh, and one day uh, there was a promise from God uh, that his throne was going to be established forever. Uh, amen. So Goliath wasn't going to take him out. Uh, amen. Nothing that he faced uh, was going to destroy him. Uh, oh, I want to give you some faith today. Uh, I want you to grab a hold of this. Uh, and understand uh, that God has not given you the spirit of fear. Uh, but he wants you to live uh, in power uh, and victory in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's right. Amen. But the same David. The same David. Who as a lad faced Goliath. Knew he was tied to something greater. He had his moments of fear. In 1 Samuel 21, the Bible says that he begins to fear that Saul is going to kill him. And so he runs to Gath. He runs to the Philistines. He runs to Achish. And as he gets there, the people began to recognize who he was. And they tell Achish, they say, do you not know who you brought in to your house? This is the one that they sing, Saul has slain his thousands. And David is ten, his ten thousands. David heard, overheard that. And fear crept into his heart again. The Bible says he was afraid of Achish. And so he started manifest, manifesting some actions that made him look like a nut. The Bible says that he scrabbled on the doors of the gate. Marking the doors of the gate like someone who has to count everything they see. Kind of obsessive, compulsive kind of activity. And then to let it go a little crazier, he begins letting drool and spittle run down his beard and getting that wild, crazy look in his eyes. Oh, he's playing a, he's playing a role. He's, 